So uh, I'll spend a bit of time looking at a logistic regression example. So this was using data that was taken from patients who were on a waiting list, I think, or about to undergo renal transplant. And they had lots of things measured about their illness and their general characteristics, such as age, whether they smoked, gender, as well as their illnesses. And the outcome, I mean, there were various ways this data set was used, but one of the outcomes was thinking about, did the patient die within five years of transplant? So it was really geared at sort of finding out which patients were likely to do well after transplant. So that will just make it a simple outcome, and it's only patients that were followed up for five years, so it isn't survival data. They either were alive or dead after five years. So one of the things recorded was smoking, and you might think, well... Does that affect how likely they are to survive after, you know, within five years of having a transplant? We'll just look at the effect of smoking using logistic regression first. You'd usually take to have a value of one or naught that they didn't smoke. And the model is very simple, so the outcome is death. And the independent variable is whether or not they were a smoker. And that also takes a value of naught or one, and death would take a value of naught or one. So that would be the model in sort of non-mathematical terms that we would consider. Next, I've got some output from SAS from doing the logistic regression analysis. And as usual in these models that we've been looking at, it's really the p-value that's of most interest to us. So it's a p-value for whether or not they smoked. That's less than 0.05, so we've got a significant p-value here. And it's testing just as you know, in all the other hypothesis tests we've done, the null hypothesis that smoking has no effect, and we've been able to say that's got a very low probability. So smoking is affecting whether patients are going to live or not. Just looking at that output, is it meaningful to us? We know that smoking's got a significant effect, but how much more likely are patients to, to die if they smoke? And so we want to get from this output, you know, this is actually that logic thing for smoking and it's not very helpful to us. So we want to interpret that. So if you recall, we had this, this function, the log of the probability over 1 minus the probability that was used to define the model equation. But we can get at these probabilities by taking the exponential. If you take an exponential of a log, and you get rid of a log and you would take an exponential of this model equation. And what it turns out, of, if you take the exponential of this estimate here for smoking, you get an odds ratio for smoking. And if you've ever done any gambling, things get expressed in terms of odds of something happening. And it's basically the probability of it happening <coughs> over it not happening. So it's not quite saying it's the probability. It's, you know, the odds of something is probability of it happening over it not happening. And so the odds ratio is the odds of death if you're a smoker divided by the odds of death if you're a non-smoker. And that's what we can get if we take the exponential of this estimate, the logit estimate. So if we, if we do that, we get something called the odds ratio, which is conveniently done for us by SAS. We don't have to use our calculators or Excel to do it. And we get that the odds ratio is 2.458, and it gives us a 95% confidence interval as well. So we can say that the odds of death at five years is 2.46 higher than for in, in the smokers compared to the non-smokers. So that's just looked at the effect of smoking. But of course, the odds of dying is going to almost certainly be related to things like age as well. So you don't want to look at smoking in isolation. It would seem a good idea to adjust their age effect because perhaps... The smoking effect is only significant because the smokers tended to be older. You don't know that, so you do want to adjust for age. In a similar way to we did for general linear models, you can put more than one thing into your logistic regression model. So this is really why logistic regression is a much more powerful technique than the chi-squared test that we looked at last time, for which, which we might have used to analyse smoking and seeing if it affects death. But we can now do adjustments and put more than one thing in the model. So if we put age into that uh, model to predict death, and not surprisingly, has a highly significant effect. Older people are more likely to have died after five years. 
But our smoking effect is still significant. So we're able to say that um, even after adjusting for age <coughs> effects and the fact that the smokers might be an older group, um, we've still got a significant result. And we get the corresponding odds ratios. For particularly smoking, that's one we're interested in. We've now got an odds ratio of 2.2, which is a little bit less than we had before. Before we had, I think, 2.4 or 5, something like that. So it, the age... It is the case that the smokers were a bit older and we've made adjustment for that, but there still is a significant effect of smoking. Also, significant effect of age. We'll be less interested in that. This is 1.06, and what it means is for each, because age is in terms of years, it means for each year of life, then the odds of death is increased by 1.06. It's 1.06 higher for each increasing age that people are living to. So that, the main use of that was really to be able to be sure that the smoking effect was significant even after adjusting for age. You might also want to ask, well, is the smoking effect more important in older or younger people? Is there an interaction between smoking and age? And you can fit that as an interaction in the model. It doesn't matter that age is a continuous variable. Smoking, whether or not they're a smoker, is a binary variable. It's yes or no. This is the output from that model. We've got a third line um, for the interaction, and that's non-significant. So there's no evidence that the um, effect of smoking becomes greater or less as the patients got older. So at that stage, you would probably just take the interaction out of the model. You've done the test. It's probably best then to take it out. And another thing to note is if you do put an interaction in, you can't sort of interpret these effects directly. It's, you're just really focusing on the interaction because you see that smoking becomes non-significant, but it isn't really. It's because most of the effect is included in that interaction. So to assess smoking, you must then take out the interaction or look at the smoking effect separately for different age groups.